Okay, and uh, first, uh, I would like to hear about the paper market, tra paper market trend and finding out photography in the European market. Mm. We don't mm. know the detail in European market. Mm. So at first, uh, is there user group like Samurai Photo in Europe? Yeah, the, the, um, we have several um, groups and I think, you know, there, I would say there are three main fine art companies in the world. So first to explain a little bit about the position of them. So Harlemulla, I would say, is the largest. It maybe has 40% of the fine art market. The next two is Innova and Canton. And they, we have about the same, 20% market share. But each company has a different approach to market. So Harlemulla focuses on the retail, so does Canton somewhat the same. And we look to, to work closer with the photographer. Maybe he would like to know the difference, the hobby, hobby photography mm. market and the art, fine art print market. Yes. Different. Yes. I think, you know, more than uh, what you do here at Samurai, where you bring together a group of photographers, mm -hmm. in Europe we work closely with individuals. Mm -hmm. So David Osborne is a very famous British photographer and he's a friend of because, Innova. Because, uh, we know there is a hobby photo circle yes. and group, or like yes. an uh, upper user group, yes. and upper user group meeting. Mm. But a little bit different the fine art market. Yes. How do you yeah. feel? Um, feel in what sense? Uh, how do so, you feel the difference? Uh, I think... Because the uh, upper uh, uh, user group, maybe yeah. it's a big group. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know if I experience um, in the same way as the question, but, but what I can say, what I learned here, is that uh, the difference between the groups I've worked with, like the Fine Art Guild mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, which is a very strong institution that works with a lot of photographers, mm -hmm. but there it's very technical, and you know, photography is, is a taught mm -hmm. process. But what I experience here is, is photography for, for your people here is a felt mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm which suits me much better. Mm -hmm. I've, I found in Europe, it's very technical. It's very, this is what a good photo mm -hmm. is. Um, but here I, I experienced the photography more than learnt yeah. the photography. And next, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe finance market. Mm. <laughs> Are there any other uh, action besides what a photo exhibition that can be taken to expand fine art photography. Uh, a lot of people are interested in yeah. to make a, uh, this type of the exhibition, mm. but there's a, any way yes. to expand this market. I think, uh, you know, one thing that, that we've learned in Innova to get this kind of thing to a larger audience mm -hmm. is to ask the, the photography trade shows um, so we, for Atlas of Humanity, for example, where we hosted it for the curator, we took it to Photokina, and Photokina was very happy to give us hall space, um, very large hall space. So, of course, in, in that time, we had maybe 70,000 people come past that, that were going to um, Photokina. And we did it at the photography show as well in, in the UK. And they, again, they didn't charge us for the space, they offered the space. Mm -hmm. And it, even there, maybe 10,000 people came past uh, the, the gallery space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, this question is uh, maybe, maybe a hard question, mm -hmm. <laughs> similar. Why is the concept and the statement important in mm -hmm. photographic art? <laughs> How do you feel? We um, discussed it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so let, let, let me ask how big your storage space mm. is <laughs> on the camera because um, I could talk until next Thursday. <laughs> okay. but, but I think, you know, uh, for me, and uh, I see uh, maybe a slightly different message that you're giving than, than, than I personally uh, experience, but for me, um, art on its own or photography on its own is something you see but if you're given an invitation into the mind of the photographer or the artist and you can read some of their interpretation then I get an experience 
And for me, the experience is far more valuable than just seeing. And next, uh, are there any requirements to sell fine art photography, fine art print, in your opinion? A, a requirement? Requirement. Uh, as in, oh, I mean, uh, uh, technically, That's then, right. then yes, I mean, uh, it it has to be, uh, it must not fade. Uh, it, it must be able to acid free uh, this kind of thing. I have to say, I mean, uh, you know, in those kind of things, I'm less interested. <laughs> you know, uh, I have a technical team that's a very experienced team from the industry. Um, I, I like the art side, but yes, it has to be uh, OBE. Free, so optical brightness as minimum as possible. You know, archival. Um, we we don't want to you know it to to have anything that will mm -hmm. fade or change the color of the image. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. And recently, uh, a lot of uh, paper in included brightness mm. and uh, optical brightness. Optical OBA, uh, I call it. Sorry. Maybe, I don't know the uh, uh, yeah. right English. Maybe yeah. right brightness, but yes. We don't like that because, no. uh, of course, I know that. Mm. Uh, do you do you know the for artists, it is important thing to use not to use the optical brightener. Sure, is sure, right? absolutely, and uh, I mean it's, you know. Uh, um, for me, it's, it's very unusual how the world, I think it's driven by the photography media world, where um, white is actually not so bright. You know, if we look at real white in the, even using science in the LAB, it's quite warm. And yet the photography markets over the years, especially AGFA, they pushed it towards bright white, which of course needs optical brightness to sustain. But those optical brightness will only last for some years. <laughs> <laughs> for us, we are totally agree with you. Mm. <laughs> and uh, next one, uh, okay, uh, editions mm. always required in the market. Editions, as as in the Innova editions yeah. range. No, no, no. Uh, uh, we are we yeah. sell the print. Yes. Every uh, every people sends the edition. Some five, edition three. Mm. That some um, some audience don't need the edition. So mm. we are considering uh, which one is the best. We have to need to set the edition number of the print, and we don't need to set the edition number. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Uh, I'm not sure. I really understand the question. Uh, Sorry. Okay, uh, where I sell the this type print, yes. we have to set the edition. You have to give it a number. Yeah. Number yeah. 54321. Uh, five, yes. And do you need it is important things or uh, we, we need all of the print mm. to set I, the edition? I mean, uh, for, I, I, in this case, uh, I don't know if I speak for the whole of Innova. For me, why does the edition matter? I mean, it's, you know, if somebody likes a print, what is it? Or, or an image, or... Only if, images. Yeah. They I, don't need that. I don't care Maybe about the number. Say, yeah, USA, I think in, in Europe it can yeah. be quite important, but I find that as soon as we write a number, one in ten, mm -hmm. we turn something so beautiful mm -hmm. into a material. Mm -hmm. It becomes materialistic. Mm -hmm. Suddenly it has a, a false value. Um, and I... I don't really associate with with that false value of something. Okay, and next, and uh, mm. talking about the signature with print. Mm. Of mm. course, uh, when I sell the print and mm. present to the print to other people, we always make a signature on the print. Mm. Mm. Is it is that the, we 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 always need to sign signature? Yes, I would I would say that the market expects that. Again, to me. It's, it's not so valuable. Um, what, I, what I do like in the Japanese art is when you do it in the kanji or put the kanji stamp. I think that's beautiful. But for a signature, again, again, it's trying to give something a materialistic value. And, and I think that goes against what art is. So I think, of course, it's nice that the photographer or the artist is acknowledged mm -hmm. in some way. But for me, it's, it's something that's nice rather than essential. Um, but, but I would say in the Western markets, because it is quite materialistically based, that it's probably required. Mm -hmm. Do authors need a website, personal website? Yes. 
<laughs> but again, that's because the modern world okay. requires. I know his question. <laughs> yes. And, yes. Uh, okay, and uh, when I make, made a group exhibition at some museum and mm. gallery, mm. that some gallery a curator asked us to make a video uh, to show the uh, audience a print and video. Yesterday, I, I show you the yes. short video to explain yes. the, uh, my activity. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Is it an important thing? Do yeah. you need that? I don't think you need because, you know, again, again, the European markets are very materialistic. What I think you do by bringing that is bring a completely new element um, uh, to art, a, a new value. It's something that I would call a new materialism, a, a personal value rather than a monetary value to, to something, an experience. So for me, very valuable. Maybe, uh... mm. In my personal opinion, mm. uh, when uh, they promote the uh, exhibition to the, the audience, mm. they have to use a website, SNS, maybe they would like to use a video, a short video. Yes. 50, 50, 50 seconds, 30 seconds. Mm. If I send to the uh, long video, uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes, mm. they selected the 50 seconds, 20 seconds to promote. Yes. yes. It is important things for the uh, museum and gallery. Mm. It's my personal opinion. Maybe uh, you agree? Do you agree? Sir? I think it needs to be fairly short. Okay. Yeah, it needs to to get the message as as quickly as possible. The message you want to deliver as quickly as possible. My personal opinion, though, as well, is leave some space for the observer's interpretation. So never completely explain. Leave a little bit of space. Maybe. Uh, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, mm. if we make an uh, exhibition together, mm. some people send a video to mm. promote another country. Yes. It is very good things to uh, promote for you and uh, another person. Yes. So, and the next uh, question is a little bit um, complicated because uh, every people who use a uh, paper size, A2 size. Yes. That uh, in Japanese house is very small. Mm. <laughs> yes. so, it is better to use the uh, A4 size mm -hmm. and uh, we can buy the more small size, like A size. Mm. How do you feel the, uh, ask about the paper size? Considering future need, mm. which size are mar art market has the uh, greatest need for? I think, um, you know, the, probably the most sold paper in Europe is going to be A3. A3? A A is, is a, yes. So this would be uh, it, almost this size. Yeah, yeah, A3 is the most popular size. Um, so we sell a lot of A4, but A3 to the professional photographer is... Maybe United States is more bigger. Yes. I think so. Everything's bigger in the United mm. States, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, a, a, well, they have their inch size. It's not quite A2. It's, uh, it's, it's slightly different, but, but yes, yeah, maybe that's very popular. Uh, newspaper. Yes, uh, maybe yes, I think, so. I think so, yeah. And how about, do you think the L size print? Maybe small? Mm. I think, you know, we sell very little in the, little. Mm. very little in the small size. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would imagine that maybe people use larger sheet size and then cut down. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, and... Uh, so, okay, uh, we like to know the uh, SDGs. <laughs> the, the, sorry? SDGs, SDGs program. In, okay, uh, this, <laughs> there seems to be a need uh, cheaper, mass product, mass producted, grossy paper, uh, like the manufactured, manufactured genuine paper mm. in terms of price and use, but is there a uh, demand for it? in the fine art market, because uh, in Epson, sales are more cheap and more using a lot of brightener. It is easy to sell, but we yes. don't like that. No. But uh, recently, um, there's an environment problem, so it is hard to make the, not to, uh, not to use the brightener. Yes. How do you feel? I mean, for making, uh, the question is for making a cheaper, more entry. 
is it more uh, good yeah. things for the environment? Oh, I mean, for the environment, I mean, we, we would definitely, uh, we always look to, to what we can do for that. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of our uh, products are cotton based, yeah. and so that, you know, has its uh, benefits to the environment. But, you know, also paper as well. Paper comes, we are FSC. In, in Innova, so we take that very seriously that we need our products to be certified in, in FSC. So they come from sustainable forests. And these are forests that if, if the world wasn't using paper or wood, these forests wouldn't be maintained. So we, we actually need, unfortunately we live in a capitalistic world and we need uh, you know, industry to, to encourage people to sustain forests. But we're always looking for, for ways to improve our own carbon footprint. So our factory actually in, in Andover in England is fully solar panelled. So it's completely run by solar panels. And, and I will drive an electric car from, from next month, fully electric car. And so we, we put in uh, electric car points in our facilities for anyone who drives electric cars can charge you know, our employees can all charge their cars from, from our place. And we, we, uh, the next stage is to do ISO 14001, which is the environmental. But of course, the paper industry and, and the fine art industry is, is a, an industry that consumes a lot of water and energy. That can't be avoided in, in that sense, but we do our best. Uh, I think that maybe for me, uh Think that if you if we make the mm. more pure white paper, mm. we need a lot of water. Yes. And yes. Uh, it is the, we have to damage to the nature. Yes. And uh, it is more easier to become the bright using the brightener. Yes. Yes. And uh, but you know the, uh, those kind of markets that that more general market is not our market. You know that's the Felix Schola people that you met. Uh, yesterday or Mitsubishi, they would be uh, using a lot of brightness. Yes, and, but using a lot of brightness because they have to keep uh, the costs in, in control somehow. They use a lot of titanium as well to, so that you don't see through um, the meteors. I think we, we, for Innova, we will always stick to more natural fibres and, mm -hmm. and natural colours. Okay. Mm. And, uh, Any good colours? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Please send me a block. <laughs> no oh, problem. It's, it's, it's nice. <laughs> you really want to be here today. Yeah, Sorry. Uh, no problem. So you. Okay, um, but can you like know the uh, photo culture? Um, is there a boundary between the fine art print market and the hobby photo market? Because in Japan, there's a lot of the uh, hobby market, uh, uh, for example, Train enthusiasts, airplane enthusiasts, young lady friends, and this little bit of difference. Yes. But, uh, do, you, uh, do you think so is there a boundary between these yes. countries? I think, I think there's different types of boundaries. So uh, I would say there was two boundaries. First of all, uh, the first boundary is, is exactly, I think, what you were describing, the type of photo. Mm -hmm. So if you're photographing aircrafts, mm -hmm. you'd probably want a very sharp, microporous coated polyethylene based photo paper and you would you would use that and of course it's much cheaper to buy than than a, a fine art uh, paper so there's there's the um, market where the the photography is very sp specific uh, and the detail is required but I think there's also um, another border which is purely based on price that um, so the amateur photographer uh, says that that's my ceiling on price. So I, I use photo paper, and, and that's that's my choice. Um, where the the artist doesn't care of the price, and and I hear an artist. Yeah, many artists have told me, you know, actually I don't want to talk about price of media because I don't care. Okay, but um, maybe he focused on the maybe but price. Mm. There's a lot of enthusiasts, mm. train enthusiasts to mm. their picture on yes. train, but they never use the fine art paper. Mm. That the decent young people or focus on the uh, Instagram. Yes. <laughs> Little bit kira kira. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And 
and uh, I think that they don't uh, make a print. No. Mm. How do you feel the uh, difference? Well, the, uh, I'm not sure how I feel the the. I mean, uh, you know, the the snapper who's who's snapping isn't printing. You know, it's all kept on the iPhone for the snapper. But you know, uh, what we do to help the um, the student is we we have customers of ours that go into the universities to to give paper. So we want to capture the younger people to use and understand. Um, Innova media and fine art media, but I also think that there is a, there's a move towards printing again. The younger the the younger people now and the early student in in the Europe and especially in the UK, they don't want to do what the previous generation was doing, which is keeping it on here. Yeah. So printing is is coming back, um, but they seem to be very specialised. And they want nice fine art papers. And just a couple of years ago, we had a, a big surge of students using pinhole cameras. Ah, I know. It's very old. Yes. 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 <laughs> and yeah. And they, they suddenly, because they don't want to do digital. So it's like a post digital era is beginning. And that's quite interesting. I'd like to see how that develops. Mm. And Maybe he would like to know the market. Uh, do you think the population of digital photo artists will expand in the future? Mm, no. Or like, <laughs> well, do you think it will remain the same for mm. the time being? Yes. Yes, and I, I mean, it, it, it's it's a it's a challenging question and a and a challenging thing because we cannot know. But what I what what I think I can know is that since the beginning of human life, we've always had art and music. Mm -hmm. So in some form, there will always be art and music, whether that's digital media or, um, you know, I'm the CEO of a digital media company, but what I would really like to see is to go back to painting and traditional methods. I agree, but if, if uh, uh, we would like to expand the final yes. market, yeah. uh, what do, uh, you think is need to expand the uh, art photo market? For example, mm. um, education, history of art, international relationships, tips, uh, social issue. What is? Yes. I, well, I think all of those. All of I them. think. <laughs> I think what we don't need. And we, I can move into a little bit more detail. What we don't perhaps need uh, is what everybody tries to do, which is bring new products. I don't think that's as important. The problem is, is the demographic in this industry, sadly, quite old. You know, we're getting older. What we need to be able to do is excite young people into this art, which, which is why I'm, I like so much that you do the message and the art. But how do we get younger people into this industry? That's the hardest uh, and, and most challenging, you know, I, I say I come just recently from the photography show and I'm still one of the youngest, you know, and, and that scares me. But, but art will, of course, always exist. So how do we get younger people to, to, to grow an interest and a love and, and the passion that we have? for art and paper, art on paper. And that's a challenge I don't have an answer to. Mm. Mm, okay. Maybe you worry about the, uh, your product, because every people or yeah, young people work mm. on the SNS and Instagram, yes. and not interested in to make the art paper. Yes. And the um, dev uh, environment issue uh, uh, making it difficult to product paper mm. uh, from peer part. Yes, uh, like yeah. a handmade washi. Mm. And the recycled paper uh, in Bitebury required a process. Uh, why do not uh, that's the same question? It often uses bleaches as well, which is actually not very good for the environment. So Maybe you don't need yeah. that. You don't yeah. use that. Mm. Yeah. But you know, recycled paper is very difficult anyway because it, it's not very uh, archival. It, I mean, you know, but, but Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi company have to use uh, yes. that type of because Mitsubishi is a very big mm, company. Yes. They have to use uh, recycled paper. But not in the photo papers. Uh, so they, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. They will in their other 
uh, imaging papers, but not in photo papers. Because uh, we show the, mm. the, the uh, print to the some mm. curator. Mm. Some curator really interested in the environment problem. Yes. To show that this is recyclable. Yes. That better to promote. Yes. That we don't like that. <laughs> Uh, maybe he would like to know that, how do you hear? Yeah, there's, there's an interesting institution, a uh, charity institution in, in Europe that's called Two Sides to Paper. You see, maybe have a look because they talk about all the benefits of the forests and you know, how sustainable it, it has become and how important it is. Again, you know, there's a lot of these forest farms that, that are used for paper and wood. And if we didn't have, if we reduced the use, then there would be no reason for these people in Chile and, and other poorer countries to sustain the forests. And then they would rot. These are rainforests often. So I know in the paper industry, we use a lot of eucalyptus tree, fast growing tree. It's not perfect, but it's better than no forest. And so, you know, it's often people like Felix Scholler and Mitsubishi, the big consumers, you know, they, they will ensure that they plant 10 to 12 trees for every tree that's cut down. So they all take their responsible place. I mean, we don't produce paper. Um, we buy our papers from sustainable uh, sources and then we put the coatings um, on the papers, but only from sustainable sources. So Maybe we have the uh, little bit uh, same problem because mm. after selling, after uh, send the print, mm. after five years, after ten years, they ask us, ask me to the, uh, give me a same print. Mm. But if we don't uh, get the same pure part print paper, it's very hard to say, send the same one. Yes. Of course, I'd like to know the same in our paper. <laughs> so, but there's a both of the environmental issue. So we very worry about the, to keep the development. Yes, I mean, you know, at the moment, I mean, the, the fine art market is so niche um, that you know we, we have FSC, but we're one of the only fine art companies, I think, because it, it, typically it's it's not the question. But and in the photo papers, where the large markets are, I mean, it's part of the reason why they put the optical brightener in to keep the stability of colour. I mean, these are natural substances. So, of course, you know, you could get an Innova product two years later that's slightly different tint because it's a natural substance. Mm -hmm. It comes from, you know, and I, I like paper about that, that, you know, it's got its own life, it exists, you know. But also, a lot of our papers come from cotton, which don't have the same, I mean, you might have fair trade, you have to look at on the cotton, but not so much about deforestation and, and so on. Okay, mm. that's a two or three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, maybe, maybe this is his personal question. He's mm. uh, working in the XY company and yes. using, selling I1. Yes. Um, do you uh, have, have any requests for the, his com company, XY, mm. I1 and uh, another major? Oh, yes. have a I want to make a yes. ISIS profile. Yes. But of course, it, uh, you can provide the ISIS profile of the, your paper. Yes. I mean, it, it, you know, for, for me, I, I think, I, 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 you know, it's, it's difficult. Uh, some years ago, <laughs> I was very involved in all those kind of things. And, and the I1 was, was just a fantastic uh, tool to, to allow everybody to, to get involved in colour management with very limited knowledge and a, a fantastic uh, tool, uh, you know, in, in the paper development side, we, we use more spectral eyes and, and, and much more expensive equipment, but the I1, I think, is revolutionary of bringing colour to, to all the people. But, you know, a lot of the printing machines now have their own uh, built-in densitometers and photospectrometers. Mm. Uh, mm. And just the same, the same uh, question, because do you have any request for the monitor, like the AZO company, like a monitor? <laughs> it is important thing to the <laughs> color matching to see the good monitor after printing the uh, watch, the yes. good paper. Yes. It's important things to color management. 
Yes, I, I mean, I, I personally think it is. I spent, you know, many, many years on the ICC committee uh, as, as a member of, of the committee. I was a member, uh, I was a, uh, a participating member from the early days, um, from the late 90s to, to 2007, I was a, a participating member. Um, and, and I think it is important, um, you know, in the, the, the monitor, but it's always a challenge. I mean, an RGB monitor is never going to represent, you know, it's an additive to subjective color space. and. And they, no matter how hard you work, it will always look different uh, on the paper. But it does a, the monitor is very, very important. And the education of that, that it's not just the monitor. It's having the, the screen around the monitor, that the room you're in should be a neutral color. Even the shirt you wear should be fairly neutral. The, if you sitting in front of a monitor in a bright yellow shirt your eye will be affected it's because it's all relative it's not a our eyes are not an objective precise science they're subjective mm. okay the last one mm. um maybe similar do you have any request for the printer manufacturer <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i i would say make printing more accessible for people make it easier make you know for the home user the professionals know how to do this and and you know so for large format printing they're, they're very nice they hold the color profiles very well they, as we say they have densitometers or photo spectrometers built in the systems are all very nice but some years ago I challenged uh, a major retail store that sold a huge amount of photo paper and noticed their, their sales were declining from art papers to photo papers and I'd said to them here is an iPhone and there's a photo on this iPhone get the photo from here and print it borderless on a 4x6 photo and not one of their technical people for this retail store could do it make it simpler okay. <laughs> This is someone, and the, uh, after that, he, uh, she would like to show the uh, web page. After that, she would mm. like to show the YouTube <laughs> thing. That's mm. all. Yeah, but no, no problem. No problem. Previous, uh, enjoy. <laughs> previous shows uh, um, this information. I'd like to. Uh, Could, uh, would it be possible for you to share? The, yeah, because I think it'll be interesting for our marketing people to hear what kind okay. of questions uh, are asked. And uh, just mm -hmm. I would like to say that maybe you are full of information about the paper. <laughs> and, and of course, I really want to make a photo exhibition together and mm. to improve the people to send yes. a positive impact. But you get a lot of information uh, from the, these mm. artists, maybe full of the image. Mm. So it is more easier to access to uh, some nail virus. Mm. So I would mm. like to show you. And, this is a website of the Samurai Photo. Yes. And it's a member. Yes. And after that, the, and top top area, thumbnail image of the oral expert. Mm -hmm. It is more easier to click. Yes. So you can see the uh, mm. my area and another is the Hasumi area mm. and the, uh, Oops. It's slowly. Yes. And you can see mm. the all of yes. some list. Yes. And if you want to see the more detail, mm. yeah, quick, for example, uh, you see the... Um, next, that's this <laughs> one. Mm. Mm. That is. Mm. Mm. And, but more, if you need more uh, detail, and 
click here. Yes. And they um, jump to the personal pages. Okay. So it is more easier to correct to make yes. the Greek exhibition. Mm. It's an important thing to this thumbnail file list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. And it's easy to member and click to member and click to thumbnail image of all of exporting. Mm -hmm. It's more easier. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, we, we will, when I get back, the first thing we're going to do is make a new